Hello, Reverend Diane Rue from Green Bay St. Paul's United Methodist Church, uh, coming to you from my home today for a Good Friday meditation. When Christians gather on Good Friday, we do so for one purpose, to remember the death of Jesus. If we don't first remember, encounter, embrace death, our resurrection news on Easter rings pretty hollow. The good news that Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, loses its power if the realities of death are not first seen and experienced and made known. So Good Friday is a day for hard, <clears throat> hard realities. So there's a reason that our churches are full on Easter Sunday and not so much on Good Friday. And while there are many different ways to remember and worship on Good Friday, one of the most popular forms is to recall the uh, last words of Jesus. Now, some of the gospel writers do not include all of these words. Mark, the earliest uh, gospel writer, records Jesus speaking only once. And that those most familiar words, I think, from the psalm, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's only in John, the latest gospel writer, that records all of these last words of Jesus. So I would suggest that you take some time on this Good Friday to read all of the gospel accounts. But if you wish to focus on those last words of Jesus, you'll find them in uh, Gospel according to John, chapters 18 and 19. I want to reflect upon what's called the third word of Jesus today. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. In speaking these words from the cross, Jesus gave his mother and his beloved friend John to one another. He bound them together, presumably for comfort, for care, for responsibility. And in doing so, he declared them to be something new. Together now, these two were changed in relationship, in love, in reality. They were no longer alone. They were no longer just themselves. They were bound, <clears throat> bound now, together in ways that nothing could separate. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. Reverend Peter's story, a retired United Methodist Bishop from South Africa, says not just that they were bound together by Jesus, but that what Jesus did to them he does to us. Jesus, in his death, nails us together. Story writes, from the cross where Jesus himself is nailed, he nails us to each other. Now, I remember Peter Story's words because I don't like them. I would rather think that with his death, Jesus binds us to one another or draws us in to one another, that somehow through Jesus, God's love unites or fastens or brings together the whole of the world. All of those images work for me. But I don't like the harsh and hurt-filled nature of being nailed to one another. And just to be clear, Story wasn't talking about God causing pain to the world, that somehow Christ desires or wills our wounding. Quite the contrary. Story simply recognizes and names what happens when we really try to be family to one another, community for and with one another. Pain is not the goal, but pain does appear to be an inextricable part of loving. Living in relationship with one another opens us to all of the joys and all of the pains and all of the risks and all of the losses of love. So I think that some of my experiences in these last weeks is what brought Reverend Story's image to my mind. 
the pain that comes with love is something many of us have come to know very quickly and very deeply, almost all of us at the same time. Now, certainly anyone who has lost a loved one to death throughout the ages has known that love brings with it suffering and loss. Or anyone who sent a son or a daughter off to war has known the pain of love. But now it's a daily pain, is it not? Going to work is a danger. Shopping is a danger. We fear when anyone leaves a house. Oh, we are nailed together in love. Grandparents touch grandchildren at best through the glass of a front door. Children care for parents with a wave through a nursing home window. Families stand outside hospitals during loved ones' surgeries because that is as close as they can get. Oh, we are nailed together in love. Living in relationship with one another opens us to all of the joys and all of the hurts and the risks and the losses of love. And we are not just nailed together to those whom we know in families and congregations and neighborhoods. We are learning, or we are about to learn, that we are nailed together across the boundaries of political parties and states and nations. We are indeed one body as a world community in ways that we may perhaps for the very first time be beginning to understand. Paul in his first letter to the church at Corinth said it this way, when one part of the body suffers, all suffer together nailed together in love. You see, Good Friday for Christians is a day for hard, hard realities. It's a day to be reminded of the depth and the cost of love. The depth and the cost of God's love for the world that we have come to know through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And, and, it is a day to be reminded of the depth and the cost of love to which we are called to have and to share with one another, indeed, with the world. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. What Jesus did to them, he does to us, nails us to each other. He binds us together for comfort, for care, for responsibility. And in doing so, he declares us to be something new, changed in relationship, in love, in reality. No longer alone, no longer just ourselves, bound together in ways that nothing can separate. And this at once it is hard news and it is good news. Because even on Good Friday, where our one purpose is to remember death, we do so in the promise and in the hope of the rising light of Easter resurrection. Hard news by God's power and grace can be and is time and time and time again transformed resurrected into new life, new living, new loving. But for now, we wait and we wonder at the depth and the breadth and the cost of love. We wait nailed together in love. Will you pray with me? Christ Jesus, you hung upon a cross and died for us so that we might live for you. Your body was broken and your blood shed 
so that we might be healed and made whole. You were faithful unto death so that we might be faithful unto life. Your last command was that we might love one another, one family, together, from every tribe and nation, a new creation united through your sacrifice, redeemed by your blood, healed by your love, united by your covenant of peace. In your death, may we find life. Amen.